2023 was heralded as the biggest year in the history of video games to ever video game a game of videos, and as that incoherent word salad might suggest, it was a busy year for us here at IGN. That said, 2024 is shaping up to have quite a few big releases as well to keep you from finishing your 2023 backlog that you piled up because you were so busy tormenting Koroks and trying to get to second base with Shadowheart. Anyway, here are some of 2024's biggest upcoming games. Check it out! Now before we get into it, just a quick disclaimer that video game release dates are about as reliable as weather forecasts at this point, so it's possible, if not likely, that a few of these get delayed or otherwise shuffled around. Also, this is by no means a comprehensive list of everything coming out in 2024, it is just a handful of games that we thought you might like to have on your radar. If something that you're excited about personally didn't make the cut, I swear it has did nothing personal, or political, or weird, or sinister, or Machiavellian, we just... We, we can only talk about so many games before our video editor dies of exhaustion. Oh my god, I almost died! No! I almost died! That was so scary! Thank you! It's okay. It's alright. It's alright. If you want a more thorough roundup, every month we put up a new video detailing that month's upcoming releases, so keep an eye out for that every month, around the time rents do, maybe. That January one is already up, so go watch that once you're done with this. If you're sitting around checking your Enchanted Hourglass, waiting on that Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake, good news, Ubisoft whipped up a nice 2.5D Prince of Persia Metroidvania to hold you over. Prince of Persia The Lost Crown goes back to the series' side-scrolling platformer roots, but with some modern twists. That's out for basically everything January 18th. On January 26th, hot on the heels of last year's new installments of beloved fighting games Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, Tekken enters the fray with its eighth entry, which is putting those new-gen consoles through their paces and really showing what Unreal 5 can do. That's on PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. That same day on new-gen and PC, as well as last-gen, is Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. That's a really expensive way of saying Yakuza 8, though the series has officially rebranded to its Japanese name, kind of like how Dragon Quest was Dragon Warrior in the West for decades, and then they finally made the switch to Dragon Quest Worldwide. Anyway, notable Dragon Quest player Ichiban Kasuga returns for another wacky hero's journey, and this time he's teaming up with semi-pro pocket circuit racer and UFO catcher enthusiast Kazuma Kiryu, who you may recognize from, like, the last nine Yakuza games. Or maybe not, he has a new haircut. Who knows? He's so mysterious. As you probably heard by now, the Arkham Architects over at Rocksteady are ditching the Dark Knight and trying their hand at a co-op looter shooter starring Task Force X, better known as the Suicide Squad. The squad's mission? Kill the Justice League. The name of this game? The Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League. You, you probably could have put that one together. The release date? February 2nd for new gen and PC. That same day, if you missed Persona 3 when it was on PS2, and then on PSP, and then later playable in PS Vita, well, first of all, shame on you, but second of all, good news, because it's been fully rebuilt as a new modern console RPG, and it's coming to everything but Switch, which is sad, because the Switch is the closest thing we have anymore to a PSP or a Vita. Who knows? Maybe they'll port it. The original Helldivers was a tough-as-nails top-down co-op twin-stick shooter about zapping aliens on other planets, and the sequel takes the core gameplay loop but reinvents it from a third-person perspective, adding quite a bit of scale and complexity to the missions, and wearing its Starship Troopers influences even more proudly on its sleeve. Would you like to know more? Well, it hits PS5 and PC on February 8th, so there you go. One game that has been in the works for quite a while is Skull and Bones. What began as a spin-off of Assassin's Creed Black Flag's naval combat has been delayed something like seven times, so pardon me if I'm skeptical that this game will actually come out on February 16th, but that's what they're saying this time, and that's on New Gen, PC, and Amazon Luna. On the 29th, Cloud, Tifa, Barrett, and company are back, joined by quite a few familiar faces, and now they're turned loose at a massive, sprawling, open world, and infinitely more detailed recreation of the original FF7's overworld map, which you can travel around by Chocobo, or on a Segway if you so desire. FF7 Remake was an incredibly ambitious start, and it sounds like Rebirth is going to be a substantially larger undertaking in all the best ways. Homeworld 3 is the long overdue follow-up to a beloved deep space strategy game that was released over 20 years ago. On March 8th, this franchise emerges from cryosleep on PC, so here's hoping it can adapt to life in the 2020s. On March 20th, one of the great grandpappies of survival horror gets a new installment. At a glance, Alone in the Dark might seem like another remake along the lines of what Dead Space and Resident Evil did recently, but it's being framed as a revival, which is fitting given the southern gothic themes. It's telling a whole new story, but longtime fans will likely get some deja vu as it is set in Dersetto Manor, where the original 1992 game took place. On March 22nd, Dragon's Dogma 2 drops, the feverishly anticipated sequel to Capcom's criminally underrated open-world action RPG. This has the same kind of extremely vocal fan base that Demon Souls did before FromSoft dropped Dark Souls and it blew up so big it inspired a whole friggin' genre. That's not to say that Dragon's Dogma 2 is the second coming of Dark Souls, but it'll probably click with Elden Ring fans dying for a big, sprawling western fantasy action RPG with crunchy boss fights. 
Meanwhile, if you're ready to commit seppuku because Sony and Sucker Punch have been shinobi silent regarding the next Ghost of Tsushima, Rise of the Ronin might hold you over, and this'll likely click with anti Soulsborne fans as well. The PS5 exclusive open world action RPG comes courtesy of Team Ninja, the studio behind last year's Wolong Fallen Dynasty, the Neo games, and of course, Ninja Gaiden. Still on March 22nd, and probably considerably less punishing than those last two games, there is Princess Peach Showtime. Mario's Mushroom Matriarch takes the spotlight in a long overdue solo adventure of her own. This isn't a role-playing game in the conventional sense, but the whole thing is framed as a stage production and Peach dons different costumes with different abilities to play various roles, if you get what I'm saying. The stages and set pieces will be just that, in a literal theatrical sense, so it'll be nice to see Peach flexing her dramatic range. Here's hoping it's a crowd pleaser. And I probably don't need to tell you that is exclusively on Switch, because it's a Nintendo game. Anyway, enough about cute princess stuff. If you're looking for an ass kicking, mark your calendar for August 20th, because that is when the long awaited black myth Wukong will make its journey westward, probably to beat you up. Developed by Chinese studio Game Science, this Souls like pulls from the classic folktale Journey to the West, which was the original inspiration for Dragon Ball, and which was loosely adapted into a video game back in 2010 in Ninja Theory's enslaved Odyssey to the West. Our Black Myth preview from last year says it's definitely got some Soulsborne DNA, but plays in a way that it's all its own. That's on new gen and PC. Meanwhile, a few weeks and about 38,000 years later, there's Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2, which drops September 9th. Years of War's muscle-bound dudes in power armors with chainsaw guns copied Warhammer 40K's homework a little bit, so it was only fair that Warhammer did the same. Back in 2011, the original Space Marine was widely praised as a totally solid Gears-like, set against the utterly bonkers backdrop of Games Workshop's tabletop game. Now, a whole middle schooler's lifetime later, it's getting a sequel, which looks to take full advantage of new-gen hardware to render massive swarms of Tyranids for you to brutally eviscerate in the name of the Emperor. Following the same Warhammer 40k naming convention of aggressive word plus type of melee weapon followed by a number, there's also Hellblade 2, Senua's Saga. The follow-up to Ninja Theory's 2017 sleeper hit, Senua's Sacrifice, Senua's Saga looks to be raising the bar in every possible way while maintaining its blend of dark fantasy and psychological horror, heavy emphasis on the psychology. That's on Xbox Series and PC, but we do not have a release date quite yet. Also on Xbox Series and PC with no hard release date is Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl, though that does currently have a release window of sometime in the first quarter of 2024. Considering this game's development was put on hold so members of the Ukrainian team could step away from their desks to defend their country from invading Russian forces, I don't think anyone will fault the studio for the long wait or get mad if the release gets delayed further. It looks like a massively ambitious game, and the original is a modern classic, though maybe not exactly modern anymore. In the time since the last Stalker game's release, the actual Chernobyl exclusion zone has become a tourist destination. From this point forward, the rest of the games in this video do not have a release date or release window at all. It's the Wild West, so to speak. Speaking of which, one of these games is Star Wars Outlaws, in addition to looking like a space western, it's also wild that it took this long to get a game that could be described as GTA, but with speeder bikes and blasters and Jabba the Hutt. From the looks of things, that's what Outlaws is shaping up to be, though, to be precise, it's a Ubisoft game, so a more apt comparison might be Watch Dogs with Womp Rats. I am definitely not complaining at the prospect of an open world Star Wars game that focuses on the scum and villainy of a galaxy far, far away. I will, however, complain if Bosk and Dengar and Zuckus don't show up. Boba Fett's fine, we get enough of him, and Forlom, I could take it or leave it. IG-88, he's all right, but I really want Bosk and Dengar and Zuckus in there. Put those weird dudes in this game, please. Supergiant Games has been chugging along for over a decade, regularly putting out colorful, deceptively complex games that have consistently pleased critics and fans alike, and Hades was met with such a unanimously positive reception that you really can't blame them for making a second installment, which is supposed to arrive sometime this year. For any Persona fans rolling their eyes at the casual newcomers flocking to Persona 3 Reload, phew, I have just the thing which you probably already know about, Metaphor Refantasio, a cool sounding name for a brand new RPG in a brand new universe from a ton of the people behind the Shin Megami Tensei slash Persona series. If you want a JRPG that doesn't go quite as hard in the paint or the fonts, there's always Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, which remakes the beloved GameCube RPG for Switch, and which should be a nice follow up to the Super Mario RPG remake that we got way back in 2023. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 is yet another long-awaited sequel that became even more long-awaited after the decision was made to go back to square one in the hands of a new developer, but the good news is that developer is the Chinese room, the studio behind the Amnesia games and Dear Esther, so this vampire game might be kinda spooky. This is the skin of a killer, Bill. If the phrase Seiken Densetsu means anything to you, you're probably well aware of Visions of Mana, but if you're not, it is the first mainline entry in quite some time in Square Enix's beloved Mana action RPG series that got its start way back a million years ago as a Final Fantasy spinoff for the original Game Boy. 
Anyway, it's probably better known as Secret of Mana on the Super Nintendo. Uh, here's the part of the video where I say that I would like to get an HD remake of Secret of Evermore, which was like the weird sort of bastard American cousin of Secret of Mana that was on Super NES. I love that game, one of my favorite games of all time. I'm one of 17 people who feels that way. Thank you for listening. Let's talk about games that are coming out in the future. There's no shortage of big fat fantasy RPGs being cooked up by the fine folks at Xbox Game Studios, and Avowed looks like it could make a nice amuse-bouche for anybody who's licking their chops waiting around for Fable Horizon or Skyrim 2 Dragonborn Again, aka Elder Scrolls 6. Anyway, Avowed is set in Obsidian's Pillars of Eternity universe, and it looks like a fun first-person high fantasy jaunt, and based on Obsidian's pedigree, it should have some good twists and turns depending on what kind of bad decisions you make, you know, like a proper RPG. This list is not alphabetical, but Zenless Zone Zero has too many Zs in the title to not put it last. That is the next free-to-play action RPG from the Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail team, and this one has a super stylish, quasi-futuristic urban setting that's going to be coming to mobile and PC and probably console at some point. Speaking of which, Genshin is expected to hit Switch at some point in 2024, and there's very good possibility that Nintendo might just drop a new console entirely, whether that is a Super Switch, or a Switch U, or something totally else entirely, probably with a better name. That'll of course have its own share of new games at launch and thereafter. And like I said, there is a ton of other stuff we didn't cover. Elden Ring's Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC is going to be a substantial expansion to an already massive game. There are some rumblings about the next Doom game, possibly a prequel. And then of course, long-awaited sequels like Metroid Prime 4 and Dragon Age The Dreadwolf Rises, just to name a few. But as of recording this in late December 2023, details on all of those are pretty vague, so we can tackle them some other time. On that note, I'm going to shut up so my wonderful video editor, Chris Del Padre, can put the finishing touches on this video and our wonderful producer, Amanda Medina, can publish it and we can all shut down our computers for the holidays and go be with our loved ones. I mean, right after I tell you to sound off in the comments with the games that you're most excited about in 2024, especially if I forgot to mention them. Tell us why you're looking forward to them. Explain why or why not. Use complete sentences. Your answer is worth 10% of your final grade. For extra credit, go check out that video on January's big game releases and make sure you are following and subscribe to IGN on your platform of choice for all of the latest updates on upcoming games and other entertainment. And there's the bell. Happy New Year, everybody. I will see you later. I'm shutting my laptop. I'm gonna go and have some eggnog and drop my mouse and f up my teleprompter. Oh no!